Hi, welcome to the video. We're going to discuss my current development environment and we're going to start off with my terminal. So a lot of people ask me all the time, hey, what font do you use? What terminal do you use? What theme do you use? And much more. So right here inside of the terminal, this is known as Hyper, Hyper Terminal. And we are using Hyper 3 and we have this sort of custom terminal here and that's something called ZSH. So let's just take a look at when we CD into Ionic Network Detection. That's simply just a Ionic project I just made. We can see that we have the master branch here. So not only do we have this snazzy terminal built with HTML5 technologies, but also we have this awesome sort of power line at the bottom here that gives us the current repo. And we can also customize that with other things. So in order to get Hyper for your operating system, you can head over to hyper.is and we can scroll down and we see this download Hyper for Mac OS. You can see also that we have Mac OS, Windows, Debian, Fedora and other Linux distributions. So this is because it's an Electron built project as far as I'm aware, it's a cross platform. So it should be available for pretty much anything that you want to run it on. So when it comes to the shell itself, I use something called or my ZSH, and that's essentially a framework for managing your Unix sort of ZSH configuration. So you can get that over at or my Z.sh, and we can scroll down. And as you can see here, we've got an installation via co. You can also see here on the GitHub repository for or my ZSH, we have an installation guideline, and you can simply follow that to get started. After that, with ZSH, we have the awesome Power Level 9K, and that's that Power Level, or rather Power Line theme for ZSH. And that's how we get the master with the current commits or anything else that you want to add. You can see here, we also have uh, particular dates and times and so on. Once again, there's installation instructions for that. So you can select install the Power Level 9K sort of link, and you'll see that. As well as that, you'll also probably need the Powerline fonts, and that just allows you to have things like the uh, sort of Git icons and a variety of other things. So that's pretty much it for my terminal. We have everything that appears on screen here is pretty much just Hyper, ZSH, and then Powerline 9K. Let's now jump in to our development environment inside of VS Code. So we'll open up VS Code using code space period. And inside of VS Code, you can see I've got a few sort of extra icons that you might not have. And pretty much all of them I use. Uh, at the moment, I'm finding the Angular console to be one which I find uh, fairly decent inside of my Angular projects. So as you can see here, we could generate a new application, we can generate components, and a variety of other things. So that there is the extension called the Angular console and that's by Narwhal and you can install that. You can also install the Angular console itself as a standalone application if you didn't want to have it embedded inside of VS Code. Next up, we also have something called GitLens and that just allows us to see inline different things that have happened inside of our Git repository. So if we look over at our extensions, we can scroll down and we have something called GitLens. So this will pretty much say inside of the code here that this person changed it five days ago, 14 days ago, or whatever it is with the sort of description of the change. You also have a lot of other powerful features. And you can see pretty much all of them right here on screen in this sort of a demonstration. You can get that under GitLens Git Supercharged. I recommend this if you're dealing with other people or you're simply dealing with uh, Git on a regular basis. Next up, this is something called Browser Preview. And this allows us to see the sort of browser preview for our project right on the right hand side embedded inside of VS Code. So it's good if you sort of don't want to have Chrome open at the same time and you just want to embed it inside of VS Code. I don't use it too often, but it is something that I found useful in the past. Next up, this is simply the Docker Explorer. I don't use this unless I'm dealing with a project that has Docker, obviously, uh, but it is sort of worth using if you are. Uh, find that you work with Docker on a regular basis. Next, I have something called VS Code Live Share. I've got a video for that that you can see on the channel and that's really good if you want to sort of uh, join a collaboration session with other people. I definitely recommend using Live Share. If you haven't already in the past and you have found it hard or difficult to sort of collaborate with other people. 
Like I said, I have a video about this on the channel already, so if you just look up that, you'll be able to see that in action. And that's pretty much it for the extensions here down the side. Uh, I do have some other random extensions which I use uh, depending on the project. For example, we have Angular 8 snippets. I use this quite often when I'm dealing with an Angular project. You can see here we have, have everything from NG, we've got FX for Flex Layout, NGRX, Material, RxJS, and much more. Going down, we've got the Angular console. We've already gone over that. The Angular language service, really good if you're dealing with Angular. In fact, I would say definitely is a 100% requirement because it gives us access to powerful uh, sort of template services here. So when we have uh, items inside of our components, we can see them here inside of the template. So this Angular language service, 100% required if you're developing Angular projects. Next up, Angular v7 snippets uh, by John Papa. Similar sort of thing to the Angular 8 snippets. I probably recommend choosing one or the other, just probably as I've uh, tried in the past a variety of different ones. Auto import, uh, something that I'm not sure how much I use nowadays. I used to use it quite often. Um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes these days for me. I would probably recommend uh, installing it, see whether it makes a difference for you. If you find that the imports are better with auto import, then absolutely, I would recommend that. Coming down to the next one, auto rename tag. This gives us the ability to, if we rename something like, as you can see here, this DOM element, it just renames the end tag. Not too snazzy, but I found that it saves a little bit of time. Of course, you can just use Command D uh, in the majority of times to copy or rather move both and edit both at the same time. But it, it's just entirely up to you. It might be interesting, it might not be. Next up, browser preview. We've already gone over that. Code spell checker. Uh, this can be useful in some occasions. Uh, you might find that you know you made a spelling mistake and you just want to make sure that you uh, get that correct. I think maybe this also goes into uh, markdown and stuff, which is why mostly I, I have this, and that'll be because I'm editing a lot of the time writing articles in markdown inside of VS Code, and I just want to make sure that I have no spelling errors. Next up, we've got the Dart language support and debugger for VS Code. This is an absolute necessity if we want to develop Flutter applications, uh, pretty much all I use Dart for at the moment. But if you're not using Flutter or Dart, it's probably not necessary for you. Docker, once again, if you're using Docker on a regular basis, I would absolutely recommend this. Next up, we have the Dracula theme with the italic keywords. It's good if you've got the operator mono font like me, so we'll go over that in a moment. Uh, I'm not using this theme at the moment. I have used it in the past. Favorite of mine. Uh, at the moment, we're using something different, which we'll look at in a second. But yeah, I would definitely recommend Dracula. ESLint, another one that I find useful. It simply just allows us to have ESLint rules and sort of see them inside of our code. 100% required, I think, for JavaScript apps. Next up, we have Flutter, and Flutter gives us the ability to debug, run, and do pretty much anything we need to do uh, with Flutter inside of VS Code. So I'd recommend this if you're developing with Flutter. And at the same time, I've just realized that I don't have an extension that I do have on my laptop that I use quite often, and that's to do with Flutter, and it's called Awesome Flutter Snippets. So this allows us to say something like stateful W or stateless W, and it will create stateless widgets and a variety of other different snippets. So this is one I would recommend if you're dealing with Flutter quite often. It saves some keystrokes. Next up, we go past GitLens. 100% would recommend if you're dealing with Git. Next up, we have IntelliSense for CSS class names in HTML. Now, I'm not sure whether I see this quite often. It might just literally be that I take it for granted, but it could be something if you want this use case that you find useful. Next up, VS Code Live Share. And VS Code Live Share, I've gone over before. I've got a video on the sort of a YouTube channel that you can check out regarding that. And then we have Markdown All in One. This is some various different markdown power-ups that allow us to just essentially write better markdown. So I do all of my blogging inside of markdown. I have a Gatsby.js site over at developer.school. So I found this, that, uh, this extension itself makes a lot of difference to me. It just saves a lot of time. Native Script and Angular Snippets by Nathan Walker. This one here gives us the ability to just essentially have different snippets for Native Script and Angular. If you're doing any sort of native script in Angular development, I would 100% recommend something like this. It just gives us the ability, once again, to save keystrokes and time. Next up, we have NPM support for VS Code. You may find this useful. Once again, we can say things like NPM install, uh, run a particular script, and so on. Same goes for NPM IntelliSense. 
Essentially, it just likes to autocomplete NPM modules and import statements. Coming down to another theme called One Dark Italic Theme. I have found this to be a good theme if you like the One Dark UI. You can see, for example, the One Dark UI right here. It's not something I've used for a while, but I like the theme. I've used it in the past, and if you're interested in that style, then of course, check it out. Coming down to the Panda theme. This is also another theme that I've used in the past, and I don't use it at the moment, but I have found to be really good. Photon theme, um, <laughs> you can make your own choice on this. For me, yeah, the, I like the light theme version. I, uh, not really too much about the dark theme here, but uh, definitely for the light theme. Sometimes when uh, maybe I'm writing and I'm in the coffee shop or somewhere, wherever I am, and it's sunny, I find that the light theme makes a bit more sense. A pretty code formatter. I would definitely recommend this. It gives us the ability to format our code on save. So we have this editor format on save. So when we save, of course, Prettier will format that code for us. I would say that this is most likely one that I would 100% recommend in all occasions. So if you haven't got this, I would definitely recommend it. Python. Python is good if you're dealing with Python and obviously you have different Python installations and a variety of other things. So this is once again a recommendation if you're using Python. If not, well, I probably wouldn't install it. We have Quokka JS after that. So Quokka allows us to do, as we can see here on screen, we can have the result of our code, which is really good for demonstration purposes, or if you just want to have a sort of little scratch pad where you can test out various different ideas. It plays well with vanilla JavaScript and TypeScript. So for me, especially when I'm teaching a new concept, I'll jump up into Quokka. Another one down here with Ruby. So if you are using Ruby, 100%, I would recommend an extension like this. We'll skip to the next one, which is Shades of Purple. This is currently my theme that I use right now on pretty much all of my machines, and it's my favorite theme at the moment. I do find it to be a decent variation of dark colors with the purple, but it's light enough where it's not too dark. And then we have these bright colors to sort of differentiate from the background. So I find that Shades of Purple absolutely is my favorite theme at the moment. Moving down to Snazzy Operator. It's a theme based on Hyper Snazzy. I've used this in the past for quite some time. You might have seen this in my videos in the past. Not something I use at the moment, but it is something that I would recommend if you're looking for a new theme. And we go down to the next theme, uh, Subliminal. And Subliminal is a good one if you're looking for a sort of dark theme that doesn't get in the way too much. It's uh, very sort of minimalistic. And, but it does seem to be only supporting languages uh, such as JavaScript and not really much else. So this could be uh, interesting for you. It could not be depending on your use case. Next up, we have tomorrow and tomorrow night operator mono theme. Once again, I like the light theme better than the dark theme in this scenario. It's not something I've used for a while. I do use the light theme on occasion, but uh, for now we'll skip to TSLint. So this is a deprecated extension, or at least will be soon. As far as I'm aware, so I think it's all being combined into ESLint. I could be wrong on this, but for now I have used it in the past for TSLint support in TypeScript. And of course it's similar to ESLint. It's definitely worth having if you use TypeScript on a regular basis. Next up we have Unreal Engine 4 snippets. Simply is just for, of course, Unreal Engine. If you don't use Unreal, then we can skip this one to Vita. So this one here is really good for view development. If you use view at all, then I would absolutely recommend this extension. Gives us the ability for syntax highlighting, various different snippets, emmet formatting, auto completion, and much more. So next up, we have Visual Studio IntelliCode. This, as you can see here, is an AI assistant development features for Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, and Java. So what it tries to do in a certain nutshell is to understand the context of your code and use a little bit of machine learning to determine what you might want to finish off the sort of uh, expression with. So as you can see, when we select something, we have this star, and it'll come up again in a moment. And that probably recommends or represents what you want to type based on the relevancy of whatever it is you're doing at the time. So right now, I think this is a sort of preview uh, extension as far as I'm aware. I'm not entirely sure how uh, finished this is, but I have found it useful and I have found it a sort of an interesting take of what future programming extensions could be like. Finally, we have wallaby.js. So I have covered this before. It's an integrated continuous testing tool for JavaScript. And what happens is whenever we write tests like this, 
you can see the pass or fill right inside of the editor. At the same time, we can also see the error message. We can also see the potential results and so on. We have the Wallaby app as well, which you could use for test analytics and coverage reports. Now, one thing to notice is that Wallaby is, of course, a paid extension. As you can see here, it's a commercial product and requires a license after a free trial period. So this is entirely going to depend on your project and whether you find Wallaby to be useful in that free trial period. If you do find it useful, then it may be worth buying. That's pretty much it for my extensions. I don't know whether I necessarily have any sort of VS Code uh, settings here that are interesting to you. Uh, probably the most interesting one would be the font family, and that's of course Operator Mono. I have a video on the channel about Operator Mono, but as you can see, the font here is essentially Operator Mono. I also have this Meslo LGM, wherever it is, for Powerline, and that just allows us to have the ability inside of our terminal here to use that ZSH power line that we discussed before. So that's how we have this master and it's integrated inside of the terminal. Another one that I maybe find useful, I think is this one here, emmet.show suggestions as snippets. It just allows us to have a bit more cleaner autocomplete when we are using Emmet. Apart from that, nothing else too interesting here inside of this config. So that's, as far as I'm aware, my development environment uh, I don't really think there's anything else interesting to show at this point, but if there is, there's something I've missed, let me know, of course, inside of the comments. I hope you found it useful. If you haven't, uh, let me know and let me know why. If you've got some extensions that you'd like me to review, let me know as well in the comments. And apart from that, just hit the subscribe button to stay updated and ring that notification bell. Until next time, I'll see you soon in the next video.